Thank you. <laughs> I'm Margie Nichols. I'm a sex therapist, a psychologist, and I'm the director of a psychotherapy agency here in Jersey City called the Institute for Personal Growth. IPG, ever since our creation in 1983, has always worked with the LGBT community. And so I have over 30 years of experience working with transgender clients. And, and I've had an opportunity over that period of time to really see the changes. In the 1980s and the 1990s, all the transgender people that came into IPG were usually biological males transitioning to be women, and they were adults. Transgender children were considered so rare that there were only a few clinics in the whole world that worked with them. And female to male, biological women that wanted to become males were also unheard of. Then in the late 90s, we started seeing a dramatic change. We started seeing college students that were coming out as transgender. Many of them were biological females uh, transitioning to male, in fact, often more of them. Um, and we also started hearing terms like genderqueer, identities that really we had never heard of before. And then in the last 10 years, there's been another dramatic change, and the age of our average client has gone down so much that at this point, we see one or two new transgender clients per week, and almost all of them are high school age or younger, down to the age of three or four. Some of you may be familiar with these kids because some of them have appeared in the news. Coy Mathis was a five-year-old transgender girl last year who won a lawsuit against her school system to allow her to use the girls' bathroom. Jazz Jennings is a tra little transgender girl that has been on Barbara Walters and Rosie O'Donnell since she was five years old. This year, Time Magazine named her one of the 25 most influential teenagers of the year, and she wrote a children's book about herself. And even if you haven't seen these kids in the news, you may know it on, more on a personal level. You may have a transgender or gender variant child. Your kid may go to school with a child like this. There may be one in your neighborhood or your extended family. Just like today, everybody knows somebody who's gay, in a few years, everybody's gonna know a transgender child. So the question is, where did these kids come from? How come there's so many of them now and there were none of them 25 years ago? Is it because we're giving birth to more transgender children? I don't really think that's the answer. What's happening is that the culture has changed. And the culture has changed so much that children, that, that transgender people are feeling comfortable coming out at younger and younger ages. So these kids have always been with us, but these are the kids that 25 or 30 years ago, we wouldn't have seen them until they were middle-aged and had spent an entire lifetime in shame, secrecy, and hiding. So this is a good thing, as far as I'm concerned. And I want to give you a, a personal example of how much things have changed. In 1983, my partner Nancy and I had a little boy named Corey. We were part of what later became called the Gaby Boom. We were early Gaby Boomers. Um, and in the late 80s, when Corey was about five, he wanted to wear a pink skirt. Now, Nancy and I are feminists. We didn't have a problem with him wearing a pink skirt. But back in the 1980s, we were a lesbian couple raising a child. It was widely believed that gay parents were going to totally screw their kids up. And so there was no question of us allowing Corey to wear a pink skirt in public or to wear it in school. And if Corey had been transgender, if he had been a kid like Jazz, we would have been in terrible trouble because back then, gender identity disorder of childhood was considered a rare but serious mental disease, a mental disease caused by mothers, of course, and we would have not only been blamed for Corey's being transgender, but we would have been told that the only cure for him was to force him to conform to gender stereotypes, throw away the pink skirt, buzz cut, primary colors, footballs, guns, and trucks all the way. That's Corey what, in his pink skirt. What Nancy and I finally decided to do, we spent a lot of time in the summer on Cherry Grove, which is a gay community on Fire Island. And so what we did was we bought Corey a pink skirt and we said, you can wear the skirt at home and you can wear it to your heart's content on Fire Island. And that's what he did. He wore it on Cherry Grove. Everybody thought he was adorable. 
And by the end of the summer, he'd sort of lost interest in wearing a pink skirt. And Nancy and I were very lucky that we dodged a huge bullet because if we had dared support him as a gender variant child back then, we would have probably lost custody of him. Now, if Corey were five years old now and he wanted a pink skirt, we might have been like this mother, Cheryl Killa Davis. When her little boy wanted to dress up like a princess, she not only allowed him to do that, but she wrote a children's book about it called My Princess Boy. Things have changed a lot in 25 years. Now we know that transgender people are not mentally ill. We know it's a normal variation. The same treatment that would have been foisted on us 25 years ago, the gender conformity treatment, is now considered unethical, thank God, because now we know that the worst thing that you can do to one of these kids is to force them to conform. It is absolutely soul crushing to make these children be someone who they aren't and it contributes to the high suicide rate that these kids have. Before I go any further, I wanna give you some definitions so we have some common ground. When I talk about biological sex, I'm talking about genes, hormones, genetics, and genitals. Your assigned gender, the gender that you were given at birth, is based, is, is based on your biological sex, mostly based on your genitals. Your gender identity, on the other hand, is the internal sense you have of whether you're male or female. Gender identity lives in the brain, biological sex lives in the crotch. Gender expression is the way that you express or manifest your internal sense of gender identity to the world. Some kids are pretty conventional in their gender um, expression, other kids not so much. Most children develop a firm sense of gender identity by the time they're two or three or four years old. And for most children, their gender identity aligns with their biological sex and that aligns with their gender expression. There are a small number of children who also have a fixed gender identity at two, three, four years old, but for these kids, their gender identity aligns with their gender expression, but it's the opposite of their biological sex. Jazz Jennings is a good example of that. She was born a male. By the time she could speak, she was, I'm a girl, I'm a girl, I'm a girl. At the age of five, her parents allowed her to live full time as a girl. That's called social transition. When she, hit, when she hit puberty, she was given medications to block her body from becoming a male body. And when she gets older, she'll be able to get hormones and gender reassignment surgery to make her body, her physical body, come more into alignment with her gender identity um, and her gender expression. And then there's a third group of kids that don't have a fixed gender identity in toddlerhood. These kids actually, their um, gender identity doesn't gel until adolescence. And this is kind of a mixed bag of kids because it includes gender non-conforming kids like the little princess boy. It includes kids that we call gender blended kids who feel like I'm part boy, I'm part girl. It includes kids that we call gender fluid, who feel sometimes like a girl, sometimes like a boy. But what they all have in common, this group of kids, is their gender identity, their total identity, doesn't get solidified until adolescence. Because adolescence is where the rubber meets the road. If you think about it, little boy and little girl bodies aren't much different other than the genitals until they hit puberty. That's when male and body, fe female bodies differentiate. And so that's the point at which these kids differentiate as well. And some of the kids decide they're comfortable with their gender identity, but they're gay. Others of the kids decide they're horrified by their body changes and they come out as transgender. And as a matter of fact, more transgender kids come out in adolescence than come out at Jazz Jennings age. This is the most common age that these kids come out. Other kids, are comfortable with their gender identity and they just remain gender non-conforming. And then there's a bunch of other kids that sort of remain in the middle between male and female. Um, and the label these kids usually use for themselves is gender queer. That's what that means. So what these kids are doing to our culture is really revolutionary because what they're doing is they're breaking down the gender binary. The gender binary is what we take so for granted that we don't even realize we take it for granted. It's the belief that 
men are from Mars, women are from Venus, there's a bright line in between, and never the twain shall meet, total separation. What these children are showing us is that when you really let children have a free gender expression, what you get is a rainbow of gender expression and gender identity, and you realize that gender is much more like a continuum than it is a binary. So let's get back now to how the culture has changed and why the culture is supporting these kids in a way that they didn't before. The interesting thing about it is these, uh, the support for transgender and gender variant kids didn't come from the gay community. It didn't even come from the transgender community. It came from changes in parents. It came from parents who fe felt differently about l allowing their kids free gender expression. And by parents, I mostly mean mothers. It's not that dads aren't supportive or they're never, never supportive, and certainly many mothers aren't supportive. There are plenty of families that reject their transgender kids. But by and large, the movement to support transgender and gender variant kids has come from moms. The two organizations that are the biggest ones in the country uh, protecting these children, Trans Youth Family Allies and Gender Spectrum, both were started by mothers of gender variant kids. These are the moms that are feminists or the daughters of feminists. These are the mom that believed all that free to be you and me stuff. They believed in breaking down gender roles. These are the moms that got trucks for their little girls and dolls for their little boys. And then when some of their kids went a little further than they had expected, and instead of just being gender nonconforming, came out of, as transgender, these are the moms that kind of took a deep breath, pivoted, and they're behind their kids 110%. These are the mom moms that are changing the laws, they're, they're forcing schools to, to be different, they're educating their families, their friends, their communities. And I wanna tell you, it's, it's not easy for them. It is difficult to accept having a transgender kid. It's scary, it's confusing, it's new, you don't know what's gonna happen to the kid. But these moms suck up their own pain and deal with it so that they can support their transgender kids. In my book, these moms are heroes. So, why should you, why should you care? Why should you support these kids? Well, for one thing, if you have a kid like this in your family, if you're the parent of a child like this, or you know one and there's one in your extended family, it's really important. You can make a huge difference. We know that LGBT kids are bullied and harassed more than other kids. We know that transgender kids are bullied and harassed most of all because they stick out. And we know that transgender kids have the highest suicide rates of anybody. But we also know that family support can be a buffer against external harassment. Look at those statistics, they're shocking to me. 57% of transgender teenagers who don't have the support of their families make suicide attempts as contrasted to only 4% who have their family's support. So if you know a kid like this, make sure you tell this kid that you love them exactly the way they are because it could be a life-saving action on your part. But what if, what if you don't have a kid like this? What if you don't know a kid like this? You don't even have kids. Why should you care in that case? This is an issue of gender equality at its core. This is an issue of sexism. One of the things that I've learned working with these children, especially with the younger ones, is that our society still hates women so much that if we see a little boy that acts girly, Everybody from adults down has nothing but contempt for that child. It's shocking to me to see how badly gender variant little boys are treated. We give some slack to gender variant girls. We call them tomboys and we kind of support them and it's okay until adolescence. Then they, they may get slammed in adolescence with harassment, but at least these biological girls have had some time to develop some self-confidence and some self-esteem before they get slammed. Gender variant little boys, on the other hand, from the earliest age, we just crush them into the ground. I've seen four-year-old biological males by little boys who already have a deep sense of shame about who they are. It's really a terrible thing. Um, 
I am not surprised that little boys don't cry. I am not surprised that grown men are afraid to show their vulnerability because as children, they're punished really badly for stepping out of line. So if you believe in gender equality, you have to make sure that it's just as okay for a man to be vulnerable and tender as it is for a woman to be tough. You have to support these kids, especially the gender variant little boys. Full gender equality requires full freedom of gender expression. These kids are gender pioneers. They're showing us all what a freer and more equal future can look like. And I hope that you can support them. Thank you very much.